Hi, and welcome to our next Ask the Expert series, Recruiting and Experience Management for a Truly Unified Solution. Here's what I found. First, we're gonna do a brief round of introductions of those joining us on the call. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about a collaborative for those who aren't familiar with us. And then we'll go into some questions about recruiting and experience management and open it up for audience Q&A. I'm Danielle White, the Vice President of Global Customer Engagement for Collaborative Solutions, and I'll be your moderator today. Next, we'll have introducing Eric Offner. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Eric Offner. I lead enterprise sales here at Phenom People. Uh, I've been uh, in the, working in the recruiting space uh, at some level since 1997. I started as a recruiter at Aerotech, uh, recruited and sold staffing for about five years, and then did uh, 11 plus years at Career Builder as a, a sales guy, a sales leader, and did some product things there where I met the now CEO uh, of Phenom People, Mahi Bayeredi, and been working with him uh, ever since at Phenom. So thanks for having me today. Thanks, Eric. We're glad to have you. Next, Melanie. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, this is Melanie Villapando. I am with Thermo Fisher Scientific, and I lead the Americas team in talent acquisition for our recruiting um, annually. About That's about 65% um, of our 22,000 hires, so we're quite large, quite busy organization. Previously, I had worked in consulting um, and in other corporate corporate roles, and then I had my own business for a while, too. Thank you. Thanks, Melanie, for joining us today. Colleen? Thanks, Danielle. Good morning, everyone. This is Colleen Garrett. I'm a consulting services manager here at Collaborative Solutions. I've been implementing Workday Recruiting for the last five and a half years. Um, happy to be with everybody. Hope to answer some questions about Workday Recruiting. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Colleen. Mike? Thanks, Danielle. Good morning. This is Mike Medina. I'm a principal consultant in our organizational change and training practice here at Collaborative Solutions. Been in the Workday space for a little over five years and excited to be partnering with Phenom with all of the great work that's being done there. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And last but certainly not least, Walter. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Danielle. Um, my name is Walter Edwards, and I'm part of uh, advisory services here at Collaborative Solutions, uh, focused on the strategy and transformation uh, services that we offer, and uh, just excited to be part of the call today. Thanks, Walter. So for those who aren't familiar with Collaborative Solutions, we are a finance, HR, and student cloud transformation consultancy. Um, we are one of the original legacy Workday implementation partners um, with over 800 Workday customers and very proud of our 98% customer satisfaction. Um, but we have engaged in strategic partnerships and we are very proud to be a partner with Phenom and we'll be implementing Phenom for Workday customers. And so we're very excited about our, our messaging here today. But we are one of our work, the Workday experts with over 100 product leads. Um, as you've heard from our call today and the um, Mike and Walter joining us, we have a Workday manage, or a change management practice focused on Workday, um, as well as all encompassing strategy planning and post go live services. And we're very proud of all of our best places to work awards because we know that happy employees make for happy customers. So let's get right to it. We're going to talk a bit about recruiting and experience management. So when you see what kind of what our focus areas is, I'm going to focus first on what's changed in recruiting. And so, Melanie, I'm going to ask you first, you're in an industry that has actually seen an uptick in hiring needs. You know, how has talent acquisition changed for Thermo Fisher during this time? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, in the beginning, we first felt the same decline and drop in hiring pauses and cautions that other companies were facing as everyone was looking to see what was happening and how to manage business. However, since the, the work that we do supports the fight against COVID-19, we've rapidly been looking to grow in key areas to meet customer needs. Um, Thermo Fisher is at the heart of the global response to COVID-19 and our mission overall that um, we promote to candidates and employees in the world is that we enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, safer. So for us, COVID-19 has been a powerful reminder of the business and the products that we make. So for us, um, since the beginning and those changes have taken place today, um, we're seeing spikes in hiring and in some cases hundreds to be hired. 
Um, so we're fortunate that our TA Teams model has already been evolving to a higher level. So we're, we're situated well for this experience. We're very familiar with working remotely as we primarily hire top TA talent, no matter where they are versus tied to a location. So our recruiters are really used to, to working remotely and the um, mechanics that go with that. We've been using video interviewing and other technology tools to enhance the candidate experience and bring the candidate and potential hiring manager together faster. So we, we're well versed in that. Our most recent implementation with Phenom People has helped us relate to our job seeker audience so much better by bringing the consumer experience to them as they look to find a job with us. That's great, Melanie. And I think it's a, a great reminder for us that, you know, no two industries or no two companies have really faced the same challenges identical throughout our response to, to this, you know, unprecedented times. And while some are obviously going through downturns, there's, you know, organizations like yours that are really helping to, to further the fight against COVID and have seen an uptick in their hiring needs. Eric, you've had a lot of customers need to change during this time. Like we said, some going up and some going down. What are some of the things you've seen with your recruiting customers? Yeah, I, I, it, it's interesting, right? Because I would put them in three buckets. Um, and to give some context, I think we we have just over 300 companies that use Phenom today. Um, and I would put them in three buckets. I would say there's there's some like like right now with Thermo Fisher that are hiring and 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 seeing growth uh, and adding headcount and things. Um, then there's uh, the bulk of organizations that are going through some sort of a freeze, uh, sitting on our hands and, and kind of seeing what's happened and whether those are you know, just a freeze or, or potentially some furloughs and things like that. Um, and then there's ones that are being hit hard like the airline industry or hospitality where there's just layoffs. Um, and you just see that the varying um, changes that the teams, and when I say teams like the TA teams, are being forced to make. Um, and it's, you know, in certain cases, it's it's furloughs. In certain cases, it's, it's you know, just straight layoffs with, with no real plan for what's to happen. Um, and then in certain cases, you know, in some, you know, biotech, some tech companies um, that are growing right um that are going gangbusters and uh and they're you know all all hands on board uh trying to trying to keep things going and, and moving super fast so it does require um a lot of you know extensive dialogue and and understanding where a company is it's it's really a unique time so each company is sort of going through this um as an individual it's you can't necessarily bucket them all uh, into one group it's, it's a very unique situation so and each of those requires you know unique strategy and potentially unique change absolutely and and i know that that's probably true across the board for all of our customers colleen what have our workday customers been saying about how recruiting has changed for them so i would divide our workday customers into the two groups those that have had to ramp up to support COVID, and those that have ramped down and are scaled back right now for those that are ramped up, um, like Melanie's team, the recruiters are busier than ever. They might have more volume than they can handle right now. So there's a couple of really simple workday steps that you guys can make, um, whether you're the admins, or whether you want to engage with your HRS team, a couple of recent features. You can enable the auto-complete feature on hire. That'll help you smooth over your hire process, make it quicker. It allows you to skip review steps, skip to do steps, um, so that the info that pre-populated from Workday Recruiting through Hire doesn't have to be re-reviewed. Helps you reduce some of that redundancy that might take up admin time. Another thing you can do within the recruiting module is if you um, have background checks that might be the long pole in the tent from a hiring timeline perspective, consider enabling parallel features. We didn't used to be able to do this from a Workday perspective, and just within the last year we can. That means that you can run offer in, par in parallel with background. Or if you think that enabling parallel stages sounds intimidating or like too much of a lift, um, consider making a small edit to your job application VP. Um, extend the verbal offer, make sure it's accepted, initiate background check, and then the offer stage. Most of Workday's background check vendor partners, like HireRight, for example, 
can continue updating statuses after the candidate is out of the background check stage. Okay, so just a few things you can do to speed things up from a system perspective. If you're in the other group and you're scaled down, you might not have as many job recs posted right now. So you wanna really make sure that you have the prospect introduce yourself feature turned on. That allows job seekers who might be out of work but looking to still uh, drop off a resume and introduce themselves to you. Uh, you can also make sure that you have external job alerts turned on so that you might, you might not have the job recs posted right now, but when you ramp back up, that'll allow people to be alerted that, hey, we're hiring again. It'll give them proactive notifications. Uh, so those are just a few things you can do. Um, if you're a Phenom customer, for example, there's a few other little tweaks you could make to your external career site. Um, have a recruiter work with someone in HR and update your chatbot FAQs to relate more to COVID content. Let your job seekers, um, passive or proactive, know what your company is doing about it. Let them know where you are with your hiring situation. So just a few small suggestions. Thanks, Colleen, and a great segue into, into the Phenom pivot, because I know, Eric, that you guys have, have pivoted during this, um, you know, phase, you know, from, you know, kind of debundling some of your services, kind of really helping with, you know, alumni networks and things like that. Can you talk to us a little bit about how Phenom has pivoted to help support customers during this time? Yeah, so we, we, we did make some changes, right? Um, and ultimately it was just some quick listening, um, the leadership getting together and just saying, okay, how do we help? Like, and, and that was like the big theme is like, all right, what can we do to help connect people with jobs and things like that? So we did launch help1billion.com a few months back. Um, there's almost a thousand confirmed companies that are hiring there. Uh, as well as more than a half a million jobs across the globe that um, that are available. And we've been working to, to publish that and get that out there. So there's no cost, there's no hidden uh, agenda or anything like that. It's just, hey, can we connect people that are looking to, you know, looking to get back to work, you know, can we connect them with companies that are absolutely hiring? Uh, on top of that, we've had some pretty large organizations have to do mass layoffs. And um, we help them create, in a sense, almost like an outsourcing platform. So rather than host their own jobs, and we, we've curated and brought jobs in for organizations that are um, displacing employees. And, and as part of a service uh, with them going through the layoffs is, is, hey, by the way, we've got this site for you and we'll brand it by the company and just bring other companies jobs. And that's been successful. We've seen you know, hundreds of people that have gotten laid off almost instantly uh, are interviewing and, and looking at getting into their next roles. Um, as far as, you know, if anyone's familiar with the Phenom platform, it's a pretty large platform and um, you've got the candidate experience, the employee experience, then there's the recruiter experience side and then, and then the leadership experience, which is a suite of dashboards. Um, and historically we've, we haven't necessarily unbundled it or even cut pieces off for organizations to use. But in times like this, so for example, um, with a hiring freeze, there might be an opportunity for gigs to become part of the organization's infrastructure. So there might be hiring managers that have projects and there's you know, employees that have gotten laid off or potentially furloughed or just a reduction in uh, their workloads. So for example, even recruiters that aren't recruiting, they could be helping and doing other things. So we've seen deployment of the gig um, opportunities uh, on the EX platform where any hiring manager could say, hey, I need 10 hours a week to do this particular project, you know, and any employee could could apply and hire to that. Um, so that's a, a really good one. The other one would be the alumni network. So again, companies going through mass layoffs because of this of COVID, at some point they're going to have to hire and uh, and add all that headcount head back, whether it's you know a few not a few months from now or even you know a year from now. They don't necessarily want to part ways entirely with the uh, the employees they love. So there's the alumni talent networks that were created, and and as part of being offboarded, um, they're, they're part of this alumni network, which then makes it very easy to, to recall them back for, uh, for hiring purposes. So those are some of the things I think 
you know, we've we decoupled our chatbot now as well. So we've got some companies that are adding that in to have some assistance with recruiting while, um, you know, while they have less headcount, I guess, in recruiting, you know, a chatbot's a great way to do top of the funnel, you know, some screening, potentially interview scheduling, things like that. So, you know, again, it's, it's, a, it's about listening and figuring out how to help. Uh, and if there's a, a mini piece of the platform that will help an organization, we've been working diligently to figure out a way to, you know, help them turn that on. So it would help them through, you know, this tough time. Thanks, Eric. That's, that's great to see all the, the changes that you guys have been able to enable to really help support, you know, not just customers, but also the people who are being largely affected by, you know, everything that's going on. You know, Colleen, you and I've talked a bit about workday flexibility for the last, I think, couple of weeks. You joined us in our first Ask the Experts where we discussed recruiting. Um, you know, obviously there's some flexibilities that you mentioned in, in being able to do background checks concurrent with offer stages. Um, but tell us a little bit about some of the additional flexibilities. I know we've had some interest in flexibilities on security models and roles, um, as well as maybe some flexibility in how you're reporting your um, recruiting activities. Yep, so good point. Um, so for the Workday customers, one thing that you can do very easily right now is you can go to the Maintain Assignable Roles task in Workday, and you can control which security groups are allowed to act as the primary recruiter. Most of you probably have your job application business process set up in a way that all of the tasks and the BP steps are righted, routed to the primary recruiter group. The great thing about this is that you guys don't have to engage a security admin to adjust assignments. If you've had to scale down your recruiting organization and you have the need to pull an HR generalist in or a hiring manager in to act as a recruiter, all you need to do is under maintain assignable roles, enable those two groups to be assigned as the primary recruiter on a job requisition, and they can step in and fill those recruiting tasks. Okay, so that's one way you can adjust. Um, from a reporting perspective, uh, be aware that the workday time to fill report actually does automatically calculate out the frozen time on a job rack. So again, if you're in the scaled down situation and you need to freeze your job racks, but you don't want to pull them down on the off chance you might still be receiving the candidates, you just can't hire them, the frozen time can be subtracted from your time to fill. Okay, so that represents the time that you were receiving candidates, but you weren't able to actively process them in the hire. Those are two examples. Thanks, Colleen. So, Melanie, when we think about talent acquisition and reframing it, I know that when we talked previously, you know, you had some really interesting things to talk about, you know, the, the transition of really showing talent acquisition as a strategic business partner. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you've undergone, you know, internal to, to Thermo Fisher to really help that reframing of the talent acquisition function? Yeah, it's been it's been an exciting time in talent acquisition. You know, before COVID-19, we were already all of us um, in TA were looking at a global talent crunch. You know, lack of lack of applicants, right experience, right skills, and all of that. And then um, because of the fourth industrial revolution that we're going through, and the substantial workplace digital transformations that are taking place, um, that's we were preparing for all of that, and that's one of the reasons we were focusing on our technology um, pieces. And then COVID comes along and is a major catalyst um, to the challenges that we're already facing. So to emphasize the value that TA brings, we focused on this heightened urgency to understand all the rapid changes that are taking place in the marketplace and economy, what our business needs now, and how we can deliver talent in spite of the challenges. So we set priorities, um, first of all, to leverage and take competitive advantage of the technologies that we have like Phenom and the video interviewing that we have um, to bring hires forward faster and showing the organization how we're helping support the business in a really strong way, despite the marketplace challenges. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, for the recruiters themselves, um, I focus their priorities on first their own health of themselves and their families, and then the work that they'd be doing today and tomorrow, what we're looking from recruiters to be more um, human, and work with the critical thinking side of their expertise. And so far the team has done an amazing job of showing agility and resilience as we flex and flow. And we've modified our approach to things like our backgrounds, um, approvals, and just overall rec management processes to try to stay ahead of, of any kind of chaos and make sure they're focused on doing what matters. 
Melanie, just just curious, are, are you guys getting involved at all with, you know, um, I think some of the enhanced health and safety measures that your locations are doing? What's what's kind of the role of of the talent acquisition group in helping prepare everybody for what they may be facing when they go on on premises? Yeah, we are. We are. We're we're just um, returning to work. That part's underway for a few locations and we're bringing remote colleagues back to work. But it's a gradual increase of the colleagues and how they work, strict health and safety protocols and guidelines then for colleagues who visit customer sites. And then that includes the candidates. So the recruiters are, are very well versed in, in prepping the candidate for what to expect to make sure that they understand what, uh, what their experience will be like if they are on site. And it is a job that needs to be on site and um, how we're ensuring their safety overall. Great. Thank you. So we know that, you know, again, as we've talked a bit about, you know, um, ramping up and ramping down, right? And and from a lean and focused area, you know, Melanie, you've talked a bit about teams that need to continue to support high volume recruiting and Colleen talked about those that need to shrink there. You know, Eric, what are some ways that Phenom can support clients who are having to, you know, go th with speed and scale their recruiting process during these challenging times? You talked a little bit about top of the funnel. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, this, this is frankly one that we're seeing a lot because there's um, there's not too many TA teams that are getting larger right now. And um, as jobs begin to come back, um, the ability to do more with less is becoming more of a, more of a topic of conversation. So I touched on, you know, how can you use automation to do what was historically done by a human? Uh, and that again is, you know, top of the funnel. It could be the initial pre-screening. It could be interview scheduling. Um, it could be those things, or even leveraging AI in the CRM for sourcing. Um, a lot of times, it's a, a new rec comes in, and you know, the recruiter immediately goes to the outside, or they might look at an old rec. Um, there's a couple buttons in there that you could press within the CRM, and it'll instantly go look at all the employees and all of the folks in your CRM as, all, as well as all the folks in Workday, that could be a quick match. So there's, there's things that are designed to really speed things up and remove a lot of manual processes that normally were done by you know, the human touch that can be done through automation. So that's one of the biggest things. The other thing is the ability for a recruiter to scale themselves. A good recruiter can, you know, keep a hot book of, you know, 50 to 75 candidates ongoing. Um, the system actually allows that person to perform at 10 X um, through talent pools and, and design automation and, and campaigning. So it allows one person to keep in touch with thousands of people ongoing through that automation. And that's really what create creates the change and moves the needle on, on speeding things up. So there's, there's quite a bit in there that allows a person or a user, i.e. recruiter, to really take their game to the next level without having to do manual work and it actually frees them up to do other things. So you, it's that's kind of the bonus there uh, on top of that. It's it's so interesting to to think about being able to go 10x on on your book of candidates. I remember, and this is probably aging me, having my literal you know spiral bound notebook and whiteboard sitting behind my desk, thinking about all the candidates that I've worked with in the past. Yeah, yeah. And I know that you know it's it's more than just acquisition. And Eric, you talked about this a little bit. You know, as we think about you know those gigs and and other opportunities for continuing the employee experience beyond initial recruiting and onboarding. You know, what have clients been doing with those internal marketplaces or mobility tools that you guys have? Yeah, well, there's a couple things in mind there. So it, actually, since March, we've deployed north of 40 organizations on employee experience. Um, and and this, this interface serves as home base for all things employees and their next role or um, upskilling through an LMS or referring a friend or colleague um, or internal events that are happening and just awareness. So focusing on um, the workforce at, at an organization has quickly risen to the top of a CHRO's focus. Um, and then on top of that, it's like, okay, well, what else is there? And you had mentioned, um, you know, gigs, you know, that gig interface is sits there as well. And then it's a matter of, you know, if moving, um, employees around. So if you look at some of the, the large organizations that might operate, you know, 
six, seven, eight, nine independent, you know, organizations within a, a big brand. Um, some of them might be struggling, but you've got others that are, you know, others that are growing. So it's how do we, you know, take employees from what potentially might have gotten laid off if they weren't part of a bigger company and take those skills and apply it elsewhere. I've seen that with uh, large financial institutions. I've seen that with insurance companies um, where, you know, certain piece of the business weren't, wasn't doing so hot, you know, uh, and, and that quickly got shifted over to other parts of the organization from a support perspective, whether that's a call center or something like that. Um, so companies are being pretty nimble and leveraging a tool like this allows them to be nimble because it's a place that they could quickly communicate with employees. You could also put employees into talent pools uh, and design and, and build out automation for campaigning even internally as well. Again, creating events, whether those are, well, mostly those would be virtual events right now, but there's other ways to, to stay in touch with the employee base for upscaling purposes as well as retention. So it's been uh, it's been very popular right now. And and that makes you know so much sense to me because we all know that you know we've we've talked over the years about how much more cost effective it is as well as what the experience um, positive experience it is for employees when we do internal recruitment you know from our existing talent pools right because they already know our culture they already know our policies they already are you know in a deep relationship with us and it really just provides dividends when we can really source that way so i think that's great to hear that more and more companies are, are choosing that rather than you know immediately deferring to to um, layoffs and furloughs um you know colleen you know our experience though has been that internal sourcing doesn't necessarily fall to recruiters you know who are some of the groups that we've seen supporting internal opportunities That's a good question. Um, so it's not always recruiter driven. That's very true. Um, both Phenom's job board and the Workday gigs functionality gives customers the flexibility to involve more than just the recruiting team. Hiring managers, for example, can be identifying internal opportunities for small bits of work, um, little projects here and there that can fill up extra time, keep employees fully engaged. It doesn't have to be a, a net new job. Okay, so that's one example of how you can, you know, fill the gap if people's job responsibilities have ramped down in their full-time position, fill in with some gigs internally, drive those internal projects. Um, maybe it's time to look at uptaking some new workday functionality. You can reach out to SMEs, engage them with HRES. It's a great time to look ahead to R2 2020. Thank you. And, and Melanie, I, you know, you guys are such a, a unique, you know, I think talent acquisition team and in the strategic focus that you have, you know, do your does your team engage in supporting internal mobility or is that managed by a different group? Well, not directly. Um, do we manage that? We do talk to um, candidates as they come in about the career path. So we make sure that's part of the discussion and the overall, this is what the job is and could be, and where do you want to go and have those discussions with, with the candidates. Um, but once they become employees, we don't um, we don't typically recruiters don't typically follow up with them and kind of source internal. Although we are changing that, we have a talent management group that was previously focused on training and development and org design, and um, we've been having meetings and talking about really the first job today for that group should be to serve up uh, internal employees for us and so we know who we have first because I know we've all we've all experienced you go through a search and then you get almost to the end and up pops an internal and then the whole thing is goes to the internal so um, trying to get that a little bit better too and then we are utilizing um, the internal mobility feature and setting up the gigs feature of phenom and I'm really looking forward to those where the employees can reach out and kind of um, find mentors and other people that they want to connect with and jobs they want to be in in the future and manage their own careers directly. No, and I, and I think that makes perfect sense. And I think we're seeing a lot in the marketplace where you know talent acquisition and talent management are, are definitely partnering more going forward. Um, I've heard from a lot of customers and, and just interesting interested to know whether you're seeing this. Do you see that, you know, recruiters have a tendency to build really strong relationships with the candidates, right? So, and then they become employees. Do they, do they reach out to your, you know, talent acquisition specialist to say, hey, I'm interested in something that I saw posted and, and then you kind of have to mediate getting them in the right place or, you know, is it pretty well known, you know, what the process is for them to look for internal opportunities? 
Yeah, that connection is made and it's definitely strong. I mean, I still have people that I recruited years ago that reach out to me and they're, you know, they're changing from one, from one role to another. And it's great to see where they've progressed in different companies even. So that connection doesn't go away. If you've made that and become a, a career coach to that candidate, it does stay. So I am looking for more ways to leverage that within the organization. Today, though, we don't encourage the recruiters to take that um, that bridge step because they have so many other things to do, but do show them how they can manage that themselves and where to go and get help. Excellent. So I just want to remind everybody that we do have the questions feature available in uh, GoToWebinar. So if you have any questions, um, you know, please feel free to post them. Um, I'm going to follow up with one question while I wait to see if anybody else has them, you know, and I'll, I'll start you with you, Melanie, actually, you know, of all the changes that we've seen happening, you know, throughout, you know, the last three, four months, you know, which change are you most looking forward to, to sticking around in the future? Well, I like the speed, the speed of everything that's, that's taken place, because, you know, if you're in TA, that's how you operate anyway. So a lot of this for us has been like, finally, everyone's, you know, they're going remote, they're catching up, you know, we're getting through all the the logs that used to stop us. So I'm looking forward to that being the new pace that's set, that set for us. But I think overall, I like the idea that the whole world has been forced to kind of become more digital and how we interact and think along that, that kind of streamline approach of how we get work done, how we connect. And I, I like especially too, you know, people working from home and, and remotely and um, videos and things. Um, you, know, you get to see more of the person in their true setting. And I think it's done a lot for relationship building for us overall. Absolutely. So Eric, I'll, I'll ask you the same question. You know, what are, of all the changes that, you know, Phenom has made or that you've seen being made in, you know, the talent acquisition community, what are, what are you most looking forward to sticking around in the long run? Well, I think um, creating a single system that all of the users in the talent ecosystem are using simultaneously. Um, for those companies that have been on Phenom for a long time, the value recognition is tremendous. Uh, and it does take some time, right? Because you you need data coming in from all sides of the ecosystem for this for it to get smarter and begin to take off. And, and Melanie start to starting to experience that now. You know, the front end is up and running and she's now migrating and, and, and moving to the back end. Um, and what's nice for a recruiter is in one view, they've got their world of available talent um, at their fingertips, right? Because they've got the external applicants, but they also have external leads and folks that have joined the talent community and interfaced with the chatbot and signed up for job alerts and the referrals are there. They also can look at which employees might be a good fit. Like that hasn't really ever existed before. Oftentimes they have to jump out, log into different systems to go find people. Uh, and then finally, you just have traditional sourcing where you could bring them all into uh, under one hood as well. So the ability for a recruiter to get really good um, at their job and move faster, it, it's all there. Uh, and we're seeing that uh, happening across the board with, with many companies and, and many recruiters. So that piece is exciting because that's a big needle move for the industry. And I think, you know, as, you know, at Phenom, we roll code once a month. So we release between 15 and 50 new features every last Thursday of the month. So we'll just continue taking everybody's feedback and making it better and making it better, um, you know, again, to, to help each of the recruiting departments continuously improve uh, and just get better overall at, at acquisition. Thanks, Eric. And Colleen, I'll, I'll end with you. I know that you've, you know, been helping, you know, customers over the last 12 weeks as they've, you know, gone through their, you know, recruiting deployments or their phenom deployments or really just making changes as they're trying to recover. What, what are some of the changes you've seen that you're really looking forward to sticking around? Well, as an implementation consultant, um, we've had a few projects that have started and finished all during the COVID quarantine. So we've been 100% remote. Um, you know, the collaborative team is used to doing a good chunk of our work remote, um, so we're pretty comfortable, you know, on video and on phone. Um, it's definitely been an adjustment, um, but it has been rewarding in a way to help client teams adjust to that because now the entire customer team, whether they're all U.S. or global, everyone's remote right now. Um, so it has been fun to come up with creative ways to keep the team engaged. 
you know, during implementation projects, we go through complex meetings, you know, we're gathering requirements, we're doing playback sessions, um, and finding fun ways to break it up, whether it's keeping the session shorter to give people time, you know, because their lives are going on around them in their houses, uh, sprinkling our sessions with quizzes and games to make sure that people are still engaged. We know that even though we're behind a screen, we're all still working on the same project team. So having customers join us in the remote world um, has been a challenge, but I think that a lot of them have adapted to it wonderfully. I think a lot of companies, now that they understand they are remote capable, may allow people to stay that way. Um, so we're definitely prepared to do more implementations fully remote. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that's great. And, and, you know, from my perspective, and it relates to everything everybody said is, you know, I think that the ability, you know, for those that have pivoted during this time frame to bring their whole selves to work, that diminishing, um, you know, here's my work persona versus my personal persona or my home persona has been tremendous. And, and that drive of, you know, being on the, you know, video or the webinars and having kids in the background or dogs barking, um, you know, having people be able to join meetings anytime, day or night, because we're going, you know, from a remote perspective, all of those things have really, I think, driven um, a completely different, I think, sense of community um, across workers, across organizations. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what this community can continue to do as, as we come out of recovery and beyond. So with that, I don't see any other questions, but I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to send us an email at digitaltransformation@collaborativesolutions.com. We'll also have a recording of this session that we can share with you afterwards. Um, and thank you very much.